Welcome back everybody to the Seattle Sonics, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K22. Today we are kicking off the long-term simulation here for the series as we look to wrap it up. In the last episode, we took home the NBA Finals over the St. Louis Spirits, winning our second consecutive championship. And now we're going to look to turn this team into a dynasty. Today, we will go through five full seasons. And then in the next episode, which will be the series finale, we will go as many seasons as we need to until everybody retires. So pretty much, we're going to get through the exact same amount of time today that we did in the first 100 episodes of the series. So it's going to be a jam-packed, exciting episode, and we're going to get to see really the primes of all of these guys' careers as we look to win multiple championships going into the future and keep this core together for as long as we can. The goal will be to run it back for as many years as we can because I want as many of these guys as possible to stick around here with our Seattle Sonics. If you would like to hop into this series and control it yourself, you can do that. If you're on the PS5 and type in my PSN, you can f go into this scenario and play it as your own. And I also put the end of all the other seasons except for season four in here as well. So you can do all of that if you'd like. Obviously, the draft classes are available on the PS5 as well. If you're not on PS5, I assume it won't work for you, unfortunately. But if you are on the PS5, then you can use it. All right, let's get to our first offseason of the day. We're going to get through five offseasons total, starting with the player retirements. Notable names in here include John Wall, Paul George, DeMarcus Cousins, and Clay Thompson. Only one of those players ended up making the Hall of Fame, as John Beeline and Ime Udoka headlined the list of retiring staff members. Paul George is in the Hall of Fame, very well deserved. For those who don't know, Paul George is one of, if not maybe, my favorite NBA player of all time. I think he 100% deserves this. I feel like Klay Thompson probably should have gotten in too, but at least he gets his Warriors jersey number retired, along with John Wall with the Wizards. For the league meetings, I want to experiment with some things and try out some new rules. So I decided to do all games will have four timed quarters in regulation. I don't know if that means there's no more overtime. I kind of wanted to see what would happen in case there's like ties. So I, I figured that would be cool. For the draft lottery, we do not have any lottery picks. And we actually don't have any picks at all in this year's draft class. We have four first round picks next year, however, from the Hawks, Pistons, Rockets, and Blazers. But we don't have any picks this year. So we're going to get through the NBA draft really quickly. We do have to use an auto-generated draft class this year because there's not really a point of me spending a bunch of time on a custom class when we're really only going to need it for two videos. So here are the top 10 picks of this draft class. As we go into free agency, we had a few team options and we accepted all of them. We have a couple qualifying offers as well, including Oscar J. Basilan and Buzz Wigginton, both of whom are restricted free agents this offseason. And obviously, we are going to look to pay both of these guys however much money they want. They are our two best players and our two core pieces going forward. You can argue which one of them is better, which one is more important, but what can't be argued is that they're both really important for this team. So we're not going to let them go anywhere. I just want to sign them to big five-year extensions now. And I also wanted to bring back Cam Reddish as well. I know he's not as important of a piece to the team, but he was the last original expansion draft pick, so I kind of want him to stay as a Sonic for his entire career. Those three players would accept, but for whatever reason, they had Buzz and Oscar sign the qualifying offer over those extensions. I don't know why, but okay. So both of them are back, but they are going to be unrestricted free agents next year. Looking at some of the big moves around the league, Nikola Jokic signed with the Heat, John Morant to the Clippers, Zion Williamson teams up with Cade Cunningham in Detroit. That is a scary duo. I feel bad for RJ Barrett, who is now alone with the Pelicans. Jaron Jackson signed with the Knicks, and that's about it. Julius Randle to the Mavs, Tyrone Williams to the Bulls, Rudy Gobert signed with the Lakers, and Mboto Mokushin Jr. accepts his qualifying offer. So as we go into player progression, Oscar goes up four. He is now a 91. He is now the same rating as Buzz. Oscar went up like four or five last year, so it seems to be a common theme with him. Lorenzo Lawson goes up four. He is now an 82. Chukum Reggie goes up three. He is now an 81. So overall, player progression appears to be pretty successful as we simulate into the sixth season of the series and the first of a long-term simulation. This is pretty much the exact same team as last year. Pretty much a copy and paste version. Same starting lineup, same bench players, literally the exact same thing. So we're going to simulate up to the all-star break now. See how the team does without me really controlling 
much of the regular season, and we did quite well. I ended up simulating to the All-Star Draft. We're 44 and 9. We're in first place of the Western Conference. The team is playing very well. We only had one All-Star, that being Oscar J. Basilan, who makes it for the second time in his career. Very well deserved. He's averaging 30.7 points per game. He's fifth on the MVP race, and Josh Giddy's actually in fourth. So Giddy's in the top five for the MVP race, but he didn't make the All-Star team. I, I don't get that, but okay. It seems like this game generally disrespects us. Buzz didn't make it either. He's had a couple minor injuries throughout the season, so I kind of understand that. I also noticed that the game signed as a player named Calvin Johnson, which is ironic because for those who don't know, Calvin Johnson's my favorite athlete of all time. And more weirdly, he's from Georgia Tech, just like the real Calvin Johnson. I promise I did not sign this player. I did not edit anything. His name is Calvin Johnson, and he's from Georgia Tech. It's too perfect. Right before the playoffs, Josh Giddy breaks his leg. That's not ideal. Luka ends up winning the MVP. The Rookie of the Year goes to Ross Craig. I think he was the number one pick by Montreal. And then here are the other rewards. Cole Wagner Jr., most improved. Jason Kidd ended up winning Coach of the Year, although the Mavericks were worse than us as we look at the All-NBA teams. Oscar made the third team, and I accidentally skipped by Buzz making the All-NBA second team as well, so both of them got honors there. Oscar also makes the All-Defensive second team as well. People seem to forget Oscar's a great defender, too. He's not just a scorer. We ended up going 67-15, and 15, one game better than the Mavericks for the number one seed of the Western Conference. I think this is the fourth straight season we've had the number one seed. Here were our team stats throughout the year. Oscar was really good. Buzz was really good. Giddy averaged a triple-double. Going into the playoffs, we're going to face off against the Golden State Warriors in the first round. They're led by All-NBA third team member Jonathan Kuminga, along with James Wiseman. They still have Steph Curry, but he is injured, and apparently he's planning to retire at the end of the year for what it's worth. He has a bruised tailbone, so he might return at some point during the series, depending on how we play. As Golden State beats us in Game 1, that's not ideal. Buzz is back from a minor injury. He's had like three different injuries throughout the year. We end up beating them in six games, and we're going to the second round against the Thunder, as Josh Giddy is now back and healthy to face off against his former team here in the postseason. The Thunder still have Shea Gilgis Alexander, they still have Giannis, and they still have Buana. That's a really scary big three, and although they did lose Jimmy Butler in the offseason, they've still got a very nice core of players. But we're looking really good early on in this series. We lose game four, but we win game five in the gentleman's sweep. And Buzz tears his ACL. Not good. So, Buzz will be out for the rest of this year. His scheduled recovery time is June of 2028. So, that means he's probably going to miss all of next year as well. Buzz is really scaring me with the injuries. He got injured multiple times last year. This is like his fourth separate injury this year. I'm really concerned about his durability going forward. We do have a great medical staff. I assume he'll return ahead of schedule. But... I, I don't trust his ability to stay on the floor long term. In the Western Conference Finals, we'll be facing off against the Portland Trailblazers, the seventh seed. They kind of have a Cinderella run. They still have DeJounte Murray. They still have Donovan Mitchell, pretty much the same team that we know from last year. They're not the only Cinderella team here. The Montreal Royals upset St. Louis in the second round. So this is what the lineup is going to look like without Buzz. For now, Chance Dumas will start at the four, and we're going to need some of our bench players to step up with him no longer on the bench. No buzz, no problem. We sweep the Blazers and are going into the finals against the number one seeded Cleveland Cavaliers, my My NBA team this year against my My NBA team last year. And with the Blazers, who knows? Maybe they'll be my NBA team next year. So we just beat the team who I may choose for 2K23. Now we have the team who I was with 2K21. And this Cavs team is really good. Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, Tony Clapp, Onyeka Okongwu. Doesn't matter because we're looking good here. We lead 3-1. We're going to simcast game five. The Cavs are looking good early, but we're making some noise late, and we have the lead with a minute and a half to go, so we're going to hop in. It's time for our guys to finish off the job and make it three in a row. Here's Oscar with the scream from Dumas. Oscar rolls inside, throws it down. He has 42 points here in game five as the Sonics lead by eight with under a minute to go. Tony Clapp brings it up for the Cavs. He averaged 30 a game this year. He's a bucket as he gets it over to Chris Silva for the slam. Why Chris Silva's in in crunch time of the finals game, couldn't tell you, but okay. Oscar draws a double team. That means somebody's going to be wide open, and it's did 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 Dumas who hits the three. Huge shot for Chance Dumas. 117-124, under 10 to go. Oscar with the layup, floats it up, beating the shot clock. This game looks like it's over. 
Darius Garland's going to dribble off the clock. They may take one more shot. Doesn't fall. And the Seattle Sonics make history as they have three-peated, defeating the Cavaliers in five games. And they have won their third straight NBA championship. What a season here for the Seattle Sonics to kick off the long-term simulation. Minus Buzz Wigginton's ACL tear, which obviously will put a big hamper in things next season and maybe Buzz's entire career going forward. This was still a very successful year. We won 70 games. We did not have a single playoff series go seven games. That's the first time that we've been in the playoffs and haven't had a series go seven, I believe. I think the only one that went six was in the first round against the Golden State Warriors. So it was pretty much smooth sailing after that, including this series, which we only needed five games to defeat the Spirits. Who's going to win MVP? Obviously, it's not going to be Buzz. It's Josh Giddy who takes it home, averaging a 22-point-per-game triple-double. So Giddy takes home the Finals MVP after looking at Oscar's numbers. I honestly think it should have been him, but I'm not complaining. We won it in five games. They were both very good this season. But we are going to face some challenges next season without arguably our best player. Going into the retirements phase, there are two pretty big names here with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry, both calling it a career. Curry plays his entire career in Golden State. There's no way he can play anywhere else. Here are some of the staff retirements. James Borrego headlines the list as Katie and Curry both unsurprisingly make the Hall of Fame. Curry's obviously getting his Warriors jersey number retired. And Durant gets his number retired by the Thunder. I find that a little bit surprising since they ended on such bad terms. The draft lottery is very important because we have four, yes, four first-round picks, including projected selections at three and 18, and they end up, sure enough, at three and 18. So we don't move down. We ended up keeping all four of our first-round selections. At three, we selected center J.C. Murphy from Xavier. He's going to have an opportunity to be the center of the future if his Omachuku Mureshi does not work out long-term. We drafted a Hungarian draft and stash player at 18. And then at 20 and 21, we selected Lance Harden from North Carolina State. And then a high school prospect with Harvey Hopkins. So we ended up keeping all four of our first-round picks. There wasn't really a big deal I wanted to make. I didn't want to go out and get a superstar because... I want to make sure I have enough money to pay all of our guys going forward. We have our five best players as free agents in the offseason. Buzz, Oscar, and Giddy are unrestricted. And Story and Dumas are also restricted free agents as well. So I want to make sure we have as much money as possible to bring those guys back, which is why I ultimately didn't do anything overly crazy with our selections. Giddy was on the player option, which he declined, so he is going into unrestricted free agency, as I just said. Story and Dumas are going to have qualifying offers. They will be restricted. And yeah, the team looks a lot different without our five best players. So our top priorities are the unrestricted guys, Oscar, Buzz, and Josh Giddy. We cannot let those three go anywhere. We can worry about the restricted guys later, but we got to get the unrestricted guys back now. And they all accepted right away, which is very good news. So Oscar, Giddy, and Buzz will be back going forward. Now we can pay Story and Dumas, both of whom asked for a lot less money than I expected. But hey, I'm not complaining. Dumas would accept his deal, Story accepts shortly after. So they are both now with the team, and we have our core five players locked up going forward. And eventually we'll need to play Lawson and Chukwu Mureji because those guys are nearing the end of their contracts as well. Luka Doncic ended up signing with the Raptors, but don't sweat Dallas because they got Trey Young. Tyrese Halliburton signed with the New York Knicks. Anthony Edwards to the Lakers. Kyrie back to the Cavs. Carl Anthony Towns to the Suns. Bradley Beal to the Kings. Tony Clapp and Chris Middleton to the Grizzlies. And then Tyrese Maxey signed with Minnesota. So a very eventful offseason. A lot of change around the league as we look at the player progression. I'm a little bit surprised Buzz didn't go down with the injury. He did lose some points specifically in athleticism. He went from a B-plus to a C-plus. Chiral Story going up five, which is a major surprise. I did not think that he was really going to get much higher than the mid-80s, but maybe I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. I ended up making one quick trade. We're going to send Teo Odiame to the Celtics for a first-round pick. We needed to clear up a roster spot. I don't really see a future for him here, so now he can get an opportunity to play in Boston. Here's a look at the lineup. Obviously, no Buzz Wigginton. He is still projected to miss the entire season. Again, with our really good medical staff, there's a chance he comes back, but it certainly won't be early in this season. I'd be very surprised if he came back at all during the regular season. We're still very high in the power rankings, but I'm a little bit concerned. Now, last year in the playoffs, we did just fine without Buzz Wigginton. We only lost one game after his injury, 
But whenever Buzz has gotten injured in the past, the team has been a lot worse. So I'm curious to see what happens. And we are 51-7 and at the All-Star break. We started the year 48-2, and and then we've lost five of our last eight. So we've certainly come back down to earth, but we did win 48 of our first 50 games, which is very impressive. Oscar and Giddy are both on the MVP ballot. Yet again, Josh Giddy is not an All-Star. And Oscar Javis Nealon is still a bench player in the All-Star game. Make it make sense. Buzz is now only projected to miss two to four weeks, so apparently he's supposed to come back in the middle of March. And again, I anticipate that'll be earlier than expected. So shout out to the medical staff. They've been so good throughout this entire series. Here with Buzz's big ACL injury, no different. And sure enough, he would come back, I think, like right at the start of March. So Buzz is back in the lineup. We're going to have him good to go for the playoffs. And look who wins MVP. Oscar J. Basilin. Most valuable player in the NBA. Some players were a little bit more statistically dominant, but when you're the best player on a 74-win team, that'll happen. So shout out to Oscar winning his first of hopefully multiple most valuable players. Along with that, Alton Arnold won the Rookie of the Year. Jaron Jackson won Six Man of the Year Award, and we took home, obviously, the Coach of the Year and Executive of the Year. Oscar obviously makes the All-NBA First Team. Kyrell Story makes the All-Defensive Second Team with Oscar. And then our center, J.C. Murphy, makes the All-Rookie First Team. So we're getting a little bit more respect in the awards than we did last year. Oscar's numbers, obviously, very solid. Buzz seemed to return to form. He doesn't look like he lost a step, which is good news. Story's production took a major boost with Buzz missing most of the year. Josh Giddy very good as well. So we're going to face off against the Phoenix Suns here in the first round, led by Cairo Nasarenka, one of their high draft picks a few years ago. They also have Carl Anthony Towns. Devin Booker is still on the roster, but he is currently injured with a broken wrist. He probably will not play at all during this series. I'm not sure how much of a difference it would make considering we swept them. So now we get to play the Thunder in the second round, who nearly blew through on lead against the Rockets. We beat Oklahoma City in the playoffs last year. It's pretty much the exact same roster. We would win the first one, we won the second one, we won the third, and we swept them. So we're going to the conference finals against the Dallas Mavericks, who have been the sleeping giant in the West. No Luka, no problem. Trey Young has been very good for them. They have former number one overall pick, Antoine Ingram, who's only an 84. He hasn't really progressed as expected. One of their other high draft picks, Sanjay Waweru, who's kind of outshined Ingram, and Waweru is looking like a possible future superstar. We won the first one, we won the second one, we won the third, and we sweep them. So we go into the finals against the Detroit Pistons with an undefeated record through the playoffs. The Pistons are led by the dynamic duo of Kate Cunningham and Zion Williamson, but the problem is half of that duo is not healthy. Zion is good, but Cade Cunningham is not. He has a sprained left foot that he got in the elimination game against Indiana. Not going to be a serious injury. He should be able to come back, but it doesn't look like it's going to matter. We're up 3 0. Going to Simcast game four. Can we get the clean 16 0 postseason run? The Pistons end our possible historic postseason run. But we should be able to win the finals nonetheless. We just have to win one of these next three games. And here in game five, we pretty much dominated from the start. So we're going to hop in late here with the SimCast. We lead 159 to 130. Oscar J. Basilin is going to dribble out the clock. And the Seattle Sonics are the first team since the Bill Russell-led Boston Celtics to win four consecutive NBA championships. The Seattle Sonics have four-peated as they defeat the Detroit Pistons in five games. And the Sonics make history as they have won four consecutive NBA Finals. They did it in 2025, 2026, 2027, and now here in 2028. Pretty darn good start to the long-term simulation. In our first two seasons, we win two NBA championships, and we did it really in a season of uncertainty with no Buzz Wigington for the first 60 games of the year, Oscar J. Basilin winning the league's most valuable player award and helping us win our fourth consecutive title. In the finals, the MVP was once again Josh Giddy, averaging 19, 12, and almost 10. So Giddy wins his second consecutive finals MVP as we look at the numbers here through the postseason. I'm a little bit surprised Kyrell Story kept up with his production, even with Buzz Wigington back in the lineup, but I'm not complaining. That'll bring us to the offseason. James Harden headlines the list of retirements. There's also Derek Gilmore, who apparently has played in the league for 17 years and was drafted when he was 11. I know, I know that's not true. I don't know why it says he's been in the league 17 years, but we'll roll with it. Big list of staff retirements, specifically Alvin Gentry, Tom Thibodeau, amongst others. A lot of big names here, including our CFO, Ronnie Freeman. 
In the Hall of Fame is James Harden. No surprise, one of the best offensive players of our generation. He gets his jersey number retired by the Houston Rockets. Going into the draft lottery, I don't believe we are projected to have any lottery picks. No, we do not. The Magic have four, and none of them are their own. The Magic are actually a pretty good team, and they have four lottery picks, including number one via the Philadelphia 76ers. So look out for Orlando to be very dangerous coming out of the Eastern Conference. We have the 34th overall pick in this year's draft. We ended up keeping that selection. There are a couple guys I like here, but we went with 17-year-old high school prospect Donovan Baldwin. This guy was born in 2010. That's how far along we are. 2010 babies are getting drafted into the NBA. Overall, it's a pretty solid draft class. I thought we had a pretty good pick for the late first round as Baldwin's a 75 overall. Again, at just 17 years old. So going into the offseason, we have Uzoma Chukwu Mereji as really our only big-time free agent. He's not as important as some of the guys we paid last year, but he is still a player I would like to keep around long-term. So we decided to offer him a two-year extension for around $23.5 million. He ended up accepting, but just like Buzz and Oscar, when they accepted their first max contracts... For whatever reason, it forced us to give Chukwu Mereji the qualifying offer, so I guess he will be a free agent again next year. LaMelo Ball signed with the Rockets, Devin Booker to the Hawks, Jalen Green to the Heat, Lonzo to the Blazers, Tyler Hero to the Celtics. A lot of weird free agent changes. We've gone quite far. Dikenji Mukwamu to the Hawks, Antoine Ingram with the Royals, so the Mavericks ended up giving up on him. I guess they were a little bit concerned about his lack of production. Giannis Kleba signs with the Hornets. The other Chukwumereji brother, Dukabu, the short point guard, signs a $115 million deal with Brooklyn. In player progressions, Buzz goes down. Again, kind of expected. I don't think he's going to go up. I don't expect him to take a massive down slope, but I think he's probably at his peak. Kyrill Story going down one surprised me a little bit. Lance Harden went up three. That's pretty exciting. He may have more of a role in the rotation. I end up doing a two-for-one deal here. We're acquiring Makare Jordan from the Thunder. He was a top-five pick a few years ago and has just not panned out at all, so maybe he'll be a little bit better here. I don't know. He's been kind of a disaster with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then I traded Harvey Hopkins away for two future first-round picks, including a possibly high pick this year from a New York Knicks team who doesn't really scare me all that much. Here's a look of the lineup with Buzz Wigington back and fully healthy. Again, pretty much the same core that we've had along with a few of the younger guys like J.C. Murphy and Lance Harden. Here at the All-Star break, we're doing pretty damn well. A lot of green on the screen. We're 53-4. and four. Not too shabby. How many All-Stars does our four-loss team have? We have Oscar in the MVP race. He's currently in fifth place. Oscar ended up making the All-Star game, and that was it. Our four-loss team has one all-star. I don't know why this game keeps disrespecting us. I don't know what else we need to do to prove ourselves. We've won four consecutive NBA titles, goddammit. They need to be given Buzz and Giddy some more respect. I mean, what else do we have to show? We nearly went 16-0 in the playoffs last year. We broke the wins record. What else do you want from us? John Morant wins the MVP, averaging 40 points per game with the Clippers. So he is kind of revitalizing that team. Jared Jackson's won, I think, the Defensive Player of the Year every season. And we ended up going 76-6 and six without any All-NBA team members. Yet, both of the other Chukwumereji brothers are there. I don't get it, but okay. We didn't even have an All-Defensive member. We did not have an All-Rookie member. We had no All-NBA team members as a 76-win team. I don't get it at all. But I guess 2K is a hater. Here's a look at the numbers on the season. Oscar had a great year. Buzz had a great year. Giddy was great. Story was great. Those guys should have been all NBA players, but whatever. Oscar Javis Zealand's a little bit banged up, but I don't think it's going to be a super big deal. It's nice having Oscar being a super durable star with our other star not being durable. We're going to face off against the Phoenix Suns again in the first round. They're still led by Cairo Nasarenka. No Carl Anthony Towns. He's currently injured. Their current center is former Sonic Bol Bol. Remember that experiment? They also have former Sonic Teo Odiemi. Cat currently has a sprained left knee. He'll probably come back at some point during the series. But again, it doesn't really look like it's going to matter as we would sweep them. And we'll face off once again against the Dallas Mavericks here in the second round. They don't have Antoine Ingram anymore, but they still have Trey Young, who is still really good. They still have Sanjay Wawaru, who is still really good. He's averaging 35.5 points per game here in the playoffs. They've added D'Angelo Russell as well, amongst others. Pretty good team, but I think we should be able to beat them. And uh, we should be able to. Fingers crossed we lose game two. 
But after that, we would have no further issues, beating them in five, and we have the Rockets here in the Western Conference Finals. They've changed a lot since we faced off against them in the Western Conference Finals a few years ago. They are now led by LaMelo Ball. They still have Isaki McDaniels. They still have KJ Martin Jr., but that's really it. The rest of the roster is pretty much entirely different. But, just like when we originally faced them in the Western Conference Finals, we have no problems sweeping them. Lorenzo Lawson is going to be out for the season with a knee injury, unfortunately, as we go to the Finals against the Pacers, led by the dynamic duo of Jazz Jackson Jr. and Apollo Steele, both of whom were very high draft picks early in the series. I remember when Steele was picked at three, we kind of saw that as a reach. And, well, it has not been a reach. Apollo Steele is very, very good at basketball. The first game will go to us. Josh Giddy's fully healthy as we win game two. We lose game three. We win game four. Lose game five. I forgot to simcast. So we're going to hop in here and simcast game number six. I accidentally simulated a little bit too far, so we're not going to see the championship celebration. But, oh well, we have won our fifth consecutive NBA championship. Buzz Wigginton wins his third finals MVP. So we have now won five consecutive championships in a row. Interestingly enough, we've never swept anybody in the finals, which is kind of odd, but okay. So that'll bring us to the fourth season of the day. Remember, we're doing five seasons, so we've already gone through three. Looking at our retirements, we've got Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler, Nikola Vucevic, Bradley Beal, Andre Drummond, Kawhi Leonard, and Damian Lillard headlining the list of players who are calling it a career. Eric Spolstra has retired as the head coach of the Miami Heat. That should be a pretty big loss for them. And then in the Hall of Fame, we have Dame, Kawhi, Kyrie, and Jimmy Butler, all of which are very well deserved. Going into the uh, Jersey retirements, that's next. Dame gets his Blazers number, Kawhi gets his Clippers number, and Beal gets his number retired by the Washington Wizards. Going into the draft lottery, we do actually have two lottery picks via the Knicks and the Hawks. They end up at 8 and 14, right where they were originally projected. At pick 8, we're selecting Christian Houston from Slovenia, the most Slovenian name I've ever seen. And then we are trading pick 14 of the Raptors for Zaire Williams. He's not a scorer, but he does a lot of the little things. He plays really good defense. He has very good size and length. The number one pick was a center named Joey Knight. He's 18 years old. He's an 85 overall. He looks like a generational monster going to the Portland Trailblazers. So he's going to be a name to watch out for because he looks like a monster. Lorenzo Lawson is our big-time free agent this offseason. He has his qualifying offer here. We're going to decline the qualifying offer for Makare Jordan. I just don't really see a future with him back. I ended up offering Lawson his extension. Uzoma Chukumareji is also a free agent, I forgot to mention, along with Cam Reddish. All three players would accept their new deals. However, again, with Lawson, instead of the extension, they have him signing the qualifying. I don't know why. Cade Cunningham signs with the Clippers. That's a big deal. A lot of other big changes. The Pistons replace Cade with Tyron Williams. Ja Morant signs with the Suns. Zion Williamson signs with the Kings. So the Western Conference has gotten a lot better with the additions of Zion and Cade. Brandon Ingram signs with the Bulls. Bam Adebayo signs with the Kings. Uh, James Booknight signs with the Brooklyn Nets. Going into player progression, not really much changes here. I think everybody, for the most part, is either at their peak or close to their peak. So this is really what our roster is going to look like at the top of the mountain. Here's a look at the rotation. Again, pretty much the same lineup as last year. As I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to run it back as much as we could. And here in the eighth season overall of the series, we've done exactly that. So we've regressed to the mean a little bit. We're only 53-6 and six here at the All-Star break. I know, how terrible, right? For the first time in this entire series, we have multiple All-Stars. Buzz and Oscar are both on Cade Cunningham's team. Buzz is actually a starter in the game. Speaking of Cade Cunningham, he wins the MVP, his first season with the Clippers. Joey Knight, that generational center, wins the Rookie of the Year. Jaron Jackson wins his 20,000th Defensive Player of the Year. And Milan Mack wins Coach of the Year. We ended up going 70-12 and 12 this season. Buzz made the All-NBA second team. No Oscar, however, unfortunately. I don't really know why he didn't make it, but okay, at least we got Buzz. That's better than nothing. Looking at the numbers, both Buzz and Oscar were very good along with Story and Giddy, of course. Lawson and Chukumreji also have double figures. Dumas had kind of a down year, but he's not meant to be a scorer, so it's fine. We're facing off against the Grizzlies in the first round. They are led by Cairo Nasarenka. It feels like we play against him every year in the playoffs. They have 27 days, 27 nights off the bench, and other than that, nobody else really notable. 
and we would end up sweeping them, bringing out the brooms as we face off against Cade Cunningham and the Clippers here in the second round. His next best teammate is Patrick Williams. They also have Miles Turner. Not a great supporting cast, but they do have a superstar level player. Doesn't matter. We sweep them and we're facing off against the Mexico City Capitanes in the conference finals. They're led by 90 overall, Jami Carlos. I remember he was a huge reach in the top 10 and now he's a beast. Prince Ezequizeli is also a great player as well. They also have Anyeka Okongwu, who's a really, really good defender. So we would win the first two, we win three, and we win four. So we have another opportunity to go 16-0 as we face off against the Pacers once again in the NBA Finals for a second straight season. Uzoma Chukwubereji back fully healthy. I think he had like food poisoning or something, so that's why he was injured. We win the first three games, hopping into game four. It'll be without Lance Harden, unfortunately, but it doesn't really look like it's going to matter. We are kind of dominating this game, but now the Pacers are making some noise. Look at this. We're only up by six with a minute and a half to go, so we're going to hop in and make sure we win this game. Jackson is blocked by Chukwubereji on the other end. Here comes Buzz. Buzz doesn't feel much slower after the ACL injury for what it's worth. As he gets it over to Chuku Reggio, has 18 points tonight, making the hook shot. Six point game now of under a minute to go after a pair of Indiana free throws. Here's Oscar. Step back. Tray and ball. Splash! Oscar Chavis sealing. It's the three. It's a nine point lead. Kyrie Story would then dribble out the clock. And the Seattle Sonics make history. We've won our fourth NBA Finals of the video, our sixth consecutive NBA Finals overall. We have won six NBA Finals in the nine seasons that we've done. So that means we are six for nine. Nice. Along with that, we are the first team in NBA history to go a perfect 16-0 through the entire playoffs, sweeping every single opponent we faced. We nearly went 16-0 two years ago, but we lost the 16th game to Detroit. And now we finally get back here against the Indiana Pacers. This is the first time we've ever swept anybody in the NBA Finals. And it's also the first time that we get to see the trophy celebration in the NBA Finals as well, as you'll see in just a second. We have not seen the trophy celebration once. I don't know why 2K hasn't shown it to us. Maybe that's why. What the hell are those guys wearing? Are they supposed to be shirts, but like the jersey is like glitched into it? I don't know. I get the game can't really make Sonic's championship t-shirts because the Sonics are not in the NBA, but come on, really? Really? That's what you have for us? You could have let the players stay in their jerseys and it wouldn't have looked terrible. I don't know, but okay. It is what it is. As for the NBA Finals MVP, they ended up giving it to Buzz Wigington. That is his fourth NBA Finals MVP. Very well deserved for Big Buzz. Still rocking the green hair. Every year that he's had the green hair, we've won the finals. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a good luck charm. Overall, Buzz had probably his best finals run yet, averaging 27.5, 14.5. So, there you go. Six consecutive NBA Finals championships. Can we make it seven here in the final season of the day as we hop into the last offseason of today's video? Not a big list of retirements. There are some solid players in here. Rudy Gobert, Pascal Siakam, but no Hall of Famers. No one overly notable in the coach retirements as well, other than, I guess, Will Hardy, who's now the head coach of the Jazz in real life. I ended up changing the playoffs, so now it's just going to be the top six teams in order, or the top 16 teams in order. The conferences are not going to matter. So, for example, we may face off against an Eastern Conference team in the first round. The Warriors ended up with the number one overall pick. With our 17th overall selection, we selected Brazilian center Travis Nelson. That was our only pick. In what looks like a pretty weak draft class, we honestly kind of got a steal. Nelson ended up being a 76 overall, which was similar to some of the top players selected off the board. So overall, pretty happy with that. Lorenzo Lawson is an unrestricted free agent, but other than that, we have nobody else important due for a contract extension. Lawson wants around $23 million, and apparently we cannot offer that. We do not have enough money to bring back Lorenzo Lawson. I figured we'd get to a point where we don't have enough money, so this is where we have to make some tough decisions. And I think of our core, like, seven players, Lawson is probably the most expendable of the group. He was the last one to come. He's a very important piece off the bench as a scorer, but his role is more replaceable than all of our starters and Chance Dumas. So it's unfortunate. I would love to have kept Lawson around. I'd love to bring him back in the future, but we don't have enough money, and there's nobody on the roster I find myself willing to trade in order to do so. So here's a look at the free agency results. Nobody really changed teams other than Apollo Steele, who signed with the Pelicans. That's interesting. So he teams up with RJ Barrett in New Orleans. 
Here's a look at the player progression. Harden ended up going up three. He's going to have a really important role with no more Lorenzo Lawson on the roster. He's going to have to be one of our best bench players. Lawson ended up signing a deal with the Spurs for one year, so he'll be a free agent again next season. He joins forces with Jalen Brown and Jayon Azkaban, who have both been with the Spurs for since the long-term sim started and beyond. I changed a lot of guys' appearances going into the final season, so some players look different and older, which, I mean, makes sense. We're five years in the future. The team's doing pretty damn good. We are 58-3. and three. Yeah, not too bad. We're 18 games ahead of anybody else in the league. Buzz is third in the MVP race. Oscar is fourth. Both of them were once again All-Stars. I think Oscar's been in the MVP race every year, and he's never been an All-Star starter once. I don't know why. Both of them are on LaMelo Ball's team. The other team captain was Tyrese Halliburton. Odd. Okay. Oscar wins his second MVP, averaging 30 eight assists by far a career high and six boards so oscar wins his second mvp i did not think he was ever going to be an mvp level player so i'm pleasantly surprised with how that's turned out the team ended up going 77 and 5 so we've broken the wins record for the third time in this video buzz ends up on the all nba second team very well deserved buzz also on the all defensive second team as well so going into the playoffs, we are obviously the one seed. We've been the one seed every year since season three. So that's eight straight seasons as the number one seed. Pretty impressive. We finished 18 games ahead of anybody else, that being the Toronto Raptors. And as we look at the numbers, the team was just flat out dominant. Oscar averaged around 30. Buzz was very good. Story, giddy. Harden really broke out. He averaged 16 and a half. So he definitely improved with Lorenzo Lawson, unfortunately, no longer on the team. Playing against the Timberwolves here in the first round, they're led by the duo of Tyrese Maxey and Isaiah Stewart. Both of them were teammates on the Lakers when we faced off against them in the playoffs in the past, so that's cool. They also have Taylor Horton Tucker, who has been on like nine or ten different teams in his NBA career. Poor guy. We win the first game, we win the second game, we win the third, and we sweep them. Going into the second round here against the Mexico City Capitanes, who have really developed a good young core with Jami Carlos and Princess Iquizelli leading the way. We win game one, we win game two, we win game three, and Oscar suffers a high right ankle sprain. I think that's the same injury he had back in season four. We won our first championship, so Lance Harden will move into the starting lineup as we go into the conference finals against the Portland Trailblazers. I think we faced off against them in season one? or I guess season six, but the first season today in the Western Conference Finals. They're led by Lonzo Ball, Desmond Donovan, and Joey Knight, that center who went number one overall. They still have DeJounte Murray as well. He's still a very productive player. They also have Onyeka Okongwu, and it seems like we play against him every year in the playoffs too, and we would sweep him. So we face off against the Toronto Raptors in the finals. They're led by Luka Doncic, Quinton DeColo, Jalen Brown, who they acquired from the Spurs earlier this season, and they still have Scotty Barnes as well. We win games one, two, looking for game three. Oscar is back healthy. That's good news. So he would rejoin the rotation as we win game three. Looking to go 16-0 in the playoffs for a second straight season, and it looks like we're going to do it with no problem. We lead by over 30 points here with 23 seconds to go, so we're going to finish out this game as Quinton DeColo drills out the clock. And the Seattle Sonics have done it. We have gone five for five here in part one of the long-term sim, winning the first five NBA championships. We have also seven-peated, which I think ties the mark set by the Bill Russell Boston Celtics of the 1960s. I think their mark was seven in a row. So we make history. We also passed Michael Jordan. He went 6-0 in the finals. We went 7-0. So does that mean Buzz and Oscar and all these guys are better all the time than Michael Jordan? Well, maybe not yet, but I suppose it's possible in the future. Although we've won seven NBA championships so far, we still have some work to do. I checked back with our Cleveland Cavaliers long-term sim last year, and we ended up winning 10 NBA Finals in that series. So we still need three more championships to tie and four to pass it. I feel like in the first episode of the long-term sim for that series too we won our first like four or five championships in a row just like we did here so that's kind of fitting i think this team is better than those cavaliers teams last year even though they had odavia shepherd which for those of you who did not watch that series odavia shepherd was like lebron mj will magic curry all combined into one that guy was unbelievable buzz wigginton ended up taking home the finals mvp i believe that is his fifth total it's his fourth or his fifth i don't remember he has a lot he averaged 29 and 10 here in the finals with ridiculous shooting including 55 percent from beyond the arc so 
in all five seasons today during the long-term sim. We won championships each and every time. And as we go into the series finale in the next episode, we're looking for some more rings. We're going to see the rest of these players' careers conclude. I don't know how many seasons we're going to go through. Probably at least 10 until all these guys eventually retire. And we'll finally be able to put a bow on what has been a great series. That'll wrap up the video. Hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.